Merry Christmas, everyone. Welcome to 1935. You all know what I got for Christmas this year? Oranges. Now, I know that might not seem like much to you, but we didn't really get oranges at all this year because of the Great Depression. And most of my friends actually got oranges in their stockings, too. Yep, welcome to the Great Depression. A few years ago, a lot of families lost money. Nobody can afford anything extra for Christmas. Some families can't even afford a Christmas tree. Lucky for us, we got the woods out back. Me and my dad cut down this tree. We hauled it back to the house and everyone else helped decorate. We couldn't afford any decorations this year, so we made our own with magazines and newspapers. And I think it's the most beautiful tree we've ever made. Now, I know what you're thinking. This sounds like the worst Christmas ever. But you know what? I learned something this Christmas. I realized that even though it might seem like we don't have a lot, in some ways, we have a lot more. On Christmas morning, after we opened up our stockings and got our oranges, we headed out to church as a family. And I realized that the true meaning of Christmas is the gift that God gave us, Jesus Christ, his only son. After church, the whole family came over to the house and we just spent time together. Our mom led us in some Christmas carols and then she went to go cook the chicken. Our dad and uncle would be playing cards at the table and they'd tell us about stories when they were young. And I realized that even though we have so little, we have so much to be thankful for. Not only had God given us our great family here on earth, but he promised us an eternal family in heaven where we never have to say goodbye. So remember to always be thankful for anything God does for you this Christmas. The year was 1914. A war broke out across the world called the War to End All Wars. So there I was in the British Army, 1914 Christmas Eve across the battlefield from the enemy. But as I sat there, I thought back to Christmases before, family and friends and a lump welled in my throat, missing carols, missing holidays. But as I was sitting there in the bunker, I heard something. Merry Christmas! Was that man, the enemy, speaking in English? And then I heard it again. And then I saw the enemy entering into no man's land, coming across the battlefield. At first I thought it was some sort of trick, but he's unarmed. He didn't come to fight, he came to bring Christmas greetings. Then all across the battlefield I saw British soldiers, German soldiers, playing football together. Germans were even setting up Christmas trees in their bunker. How could this be? How could mortal enemies come together when we've been fighting for so long? And then I heard the German soldier say, Christmas, the celebration of love that can bring mortal enemies together. Christmas is more important than any army, nation, or king. Christmas is about Jesus, the coming king, the prince of peace. Since Jesus came at his birth, it was the promise that one day there would be no more war. Not only can we have peace with one another, but we can also have peace with God. And it's all because of Jesus. I'll never forget that Christmas Eve singing Silent Night with my German soldiers in the bunker. After all, they did invent the song. Before we go, perhaps you sing a song with us. Uh, a, a song that will remind us that God will bring peace to the earth. Silent night, holy night, all is calm. All is bright round yon virgin mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. Hello and welcome to England in the year 1739. Don't you just love Christmas time? I know I do. 
My favorite part of Christmas is the songs. I even wrote some myself. Perhaps you've sang some of them? Oh, excuse me, I didn't introduce myself. I'm Charles Wesley. Now, people weren't always singing these songs. My grandfather told me in his day, Christmas was banned. Can you believe it? It was illegal to celebrate Christmas in the 1600s, not only in England, but also in the 13 colonies, or excuse me, United States of America. It was illegal to take off work, to sing Christmas songs, to decorate, to celebrate, and even sometimes go to church to celebrate Christmas. They could fine you up to five shillings if they found you making merry of yourself at Christmas. And you thought the Grinch was bad. No. Why did all of this come about? Well, believe it or not, it was actually the church that banned the celebration of Christmas. You see, Christmas celebrations had gotten out of control. People were celebrating for all the wrong reasons. It became about how much money you spent, eating, drinking, and sometimes even participating in bad behavior. People were so caught up in the holidays that they didn't even worship Jesus. But slowly, people began to miss Christmas and celebrating the holiday. The laws were reversed in England. Now, being the songwriter for the church, I wanted to remind people about the true meaning of Christmas. I didn't want them to forget again and celebrate Christmas for the wrong reasons. So, one Christmas day on my way to church, I heard the most beautiful sound. It was the church bells. It was such a sweet sound, and I felt the joy well up inside of me, and I knew I must write a song about it. So with the help of my friend George Whitfield, I wrote the song, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. That line, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, means listen to the message of the angels. And what was that message? Glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth, mercy mild, God and sinner reconciled. The message of the angels was this. Jesus had come to restore our relationship with God. You see, we must never forget that Christmas is about the joyful message that we can be forgiven and restored in our relationship with God. It's not about presents or decorations or good food, but about the peace that we have with God, the one who made us. So, would you be willing to sing a verse of my song with me? Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mild God and sinners reconciled Joyful Thank you all for watching our video, uh, our theme, Unique Christmases. Now, I know what you're thinking. That British soldier with an Australian accent ought to be up for an Oscar for a superb performance. But in many ways, we are experiencing a unique Christmas ourselves, are we not? 2020 has been a strange year, to say the least. For some of you, Christmas looks different this year. Perhaps certain loved ones aren't going to be at the gathering. They didn't feel safe traveling. Others are restricted because they're nursing home or other circumstances with their health. And for some families, they've even experienced great loss during this time. But as we've seen, even though Christmas might be unique throughout history, one truth always remains the same. And it's the story of God's love for us in Jesus Christ. You see, the message of Christmas is that God loved us even when we did not love him back. Uh, the story of humanity is that God made us and he loved us, but we decided to disobey God. We wanted to love ourselves and do things our own way, which only ended in separation and death. But God continued to love mankind. And he sent his son Jesus to come as a human so that he might die for us to pay the penalty for the sins that we deserved, the death that we deserved. And so now Jesus Christ has made a way that we can come back to God. 
You see, the message of Christmas isn't about cleaning ourselves up or being perfect in order to have God love us. It's that God loved us even while we were sinners. And this grace is a gift, like any Christmas gift. You don't do anything to earn the Christmas gift. It's all grace. And so what we do is we come to Jesus saying, Lord, I know I deserve death. I don't deserve your love. I deserve hell. But because of Jesus taking the punishment for me, I'm not going to trust in myself anymore. I'm going to turn away from my sin. I'm not trusting in any other God. No other God can save me like you can. Because not only did you die for me, but you rose again from the dead. And those who put their faith in Jesus Christ will not die. But when, they, when Jesus returns, they will also raise from the dead. For they have the same spirit inside of them that rose Jesus Christ from the dead. Our prayer here at HTC is that this would be an unusual Christmas for you. Not just because of 2020, but perhaps for the first time in your life, you might understand the true meaning of Christmas and receive the ultimate gift from God, eternal life and a relationship with Him. Merry Christmas from Hamden Congregational Church. Oh,